Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, thank you for tuning in, and welcome to this album review. This time we tackled the fourth studio album by Welsh pop punk titans, Neck Deep. This one is entitled All Distortions Are Intentional, and it is the follow-up to 2017's The Peace and the Panic. So Neck Deep are one of the bands that are among my favorite bands, especially ones that really broke out within the last decade. In 2015, they put out a magnum opus, Slice Out to Get You, one of my favorite albums of all time, honestly. Certainly in the pop-punk realm, every song front to back was just so vibrant and summery, and th there's not a bad song on that album. But with uh, their newfound success also came some new lofty expectations. This album, that album positioned them as genre leaders going forward, and... When the piece from the panic dropped in August of 2017, and it sort of fell short of the band's newfound loftier expectations, it left me personally a little uncertain and uneasy about where they would go from there. And honestly, I was scared that this album, All Distortions Are Intentional, would be the continue the degradation of their sound. Thankfully, this album is a return to form on all accounts, keeping all of the niches and idiosyncrasies that made the band who they are, while still advancing their sound forward and reaffirming their position as one of the titans. Uh, in the modern pop punk uh, scene, uh, certainly at the forefront of the genre going forward. So Sunderland opens down with a thunderous mix of guitars and drums. It appears Ben Barlow and company have found a niche for big, soaring, sugary, sweet pop punk choruses. The writing reminds me of Life's Not To Get You, and though the composition might be a lot closer to the piece in the panic, the band has certainly moved themselves forward. Despite the glossier sound, the band's core pop punk sound palette is still here. Uh, it simply evolved, though. Tracks like Fall, one of the singles, is an exemplar of this. This is the kind of track that makes me want to roll the windows down and let the fleeting summer wind just funnel its way into my vicinity. I'm hearing a lot of criticism about Ben Barlow singing in a higher vocal register, but I think it works. <laughs> There's jokes going around about him going through reverse puberty, but again, I think this slightly higher octave fits the glossier, poppier approach. This isn't the band that performed gritty, breakneck bangers on Life's Not To Get You. This is now a seasoned act that are expanding their sound and taking opportunities to experiment, well, sort of, I wouldn't really call it experimentation, without losing the quirks and qualities that made them who they are. Getting back to fall, I am a huge fan of the crunching, prominent, and wailing guitars all throughout this song. Uh, these guys are definitely among the most talented and technically proficient bands in pop punk, if not the most. Low Life is the quintessential neck deep song. Only these guys could call the listener a normie so convincingly, as Ben sings about drinking coffee on a trampoline and proclaiming, I'm vacant, see? <laughs> I love wordplay. Seriously though, this is one of the tracks, especially in the lead up to the release of this album, that had subverted my expectations, my originally low expectations for this album, and because the instrumentals are so ebullient and so vibrant, it was one of those uh, songs that had really uh, let me know everything was going to be okay, because again, going into some of these, th there were at least five lead-off singles, or promotional singles, uh, leading up to the release of this album. Which is a lot, honestly. It's almost half the album. But uh, going into each one, I was afraid that it was going to dampen and slowly uh, my, not only my expectations, but my thoughts on the, on the full album. But thankfully, they subverted those expectations and they uh, reassured me that the band they were five years ago is still there. They've just evolved and grown. <sighs> Telling Stories has a sort of a slow burn intro featuring some vocal alterations and some shimmery guitar riffs, leading me to believe that we were in for a type of an In Bloom song, which was featured on their last album. But the chorus picked things up with a big head of steam real fucking quick. Talk about the higher vocal register all you want. I like Ben's vocal runs. His vocals have really come a long way since he was screaming on a part of me. <sighs> and uh, the, uh, As much as I love this band, those are days that I want to forget, thankfully. So, When You Know is appropriately placed as we approach the summit of the album. The band has found a groove by this point. I wouldn't call All Distortions Are Intentional a concept album by any stretch of the imagination, but we do have a protagonist here, and his name is Jet, and he has a girlfriend named Alice. And on this track in particular, he expresses thankfulness to her that she's right there for that she's right there for him. Sunshine, we don't belong here. But it feels so good when you want me, baby. Oh, and then we get to Corey. Oh, ben tries rapping. <laughs> Oh man, that thick Welsh accent doesn't help him. Please skip this one. The rest of the album is fucking awesome, but this track, whew, right in the trash bin. Oh my god, that song is abysmal. Uh, Sick Joke picks things right back up, however. Those fiery guitars make a quick and welcome return with some more nice writing from Ben that does more to reassure the listener than I think was intended. I'm still here and I'm not dead, he proclaims. This one stylistically is just your standard mid-tempo pop punk jam, but it's one of several on this album that I replayed multiple times just for the ear guys because it's really high quality with the production value and the vibrant instrumentation. I just, uh, I'm a sucker for it. 
What took you so long is occupied with some nice bubbly pop slash alternative rock overtones and some silky layered guitars. The pairing of Sam Bowden on guitar and new member Seb, Ben's brother, on bass is, is a real treat. Seb has always made the produ producer's chair for Neck Deep, but now he's an official member and he's a welcome addition. I love the way the spirited bass complements the glistening riffs on this track. Empty House follows the same mold stylistically. This, this is as almost as melancholic as the lyrics get on this entire record as Ben ponders, what is it going to take to feel just okay? But quickly reassures the listener that there's no need to be alarmed. I'm just trying to make this better now, he promises. Little Dove is the obligatory acoustic track that Neck Deep routinely supplies on each release, but it's a, a slightly different approach. Ben sings of the distance between him and the woman he loves that's tearing him apart and questioning whether he should just let go. I know these tracks and these lyrics are a dime a dozen, but this song conjures up more earnest emotion than Wish You Were Here did or even December before that. I Revolve Around You is right there, however, with another shot of Saturn to bring this album back to life as we approach the closing moments. Reliant on some really vibrant imagery, Ben expresses his love in a really nice way. She's the orbit that gets me by, he gushes. Caught in your sunbeam, I only spin for you, he continues. This song is so fucking lush and so upbeat. I went back for about 10 replay lessons. This song is instantly catapulted into the upper echelon of Neck Deep's all-time best compositions. And then Pushing Daisies closes the album with Ben urging the listener to move forward in life. If you let go, you might find the end holds your new start, he contends. It's a long road, but I'm not scared, he continues. I, honestly, the perfect way to end this album. The writing honestly reminded me of Yellow Card with that summary emotion, with that summary optimism, desperate emotion, and uh, promising the listener that everything will be okay. <laughs> uh, I'm so cliche and I'm so corny now. So, some closing general thoughts. Almost every song, save for that horrendous song, Corey. Ugh, yikes. Save for that song, every song in here is an absolute banger. If you are not cynical enough to separate maybe the really nice lyricism from the uh, instrumentals in the composition, then this album is more than serviceable enough, serviceable enough as the kind of summary uh, album you want to roll down the windows and just crank up the volume and just let the summer air funnel its way through <laughs> into you let that music funnel its way through your speakers and just have a good time and then of course if you want to actually microanalyze the the lyrics are really where the staying power is found and there's a lot of great moments on here lyrically honestly as much as i don't think the band will ever touch life somehow to get you that album is just flawless and of course tracks like Corey simply hold the album back this is definitely a step up from the peace and the panic reaffirming the band's place as I don't want to say Kings because that's a, that's a slight bit of a reach, but uh, definitely punctuating this band as one of the premier acts in pop punk as we go into the into the new decade and new generation. I'm giving All Distortions Are Intentional a strong 4.5 out of 5. This is easily my top three albums of this year. I loved it front to back with the exception of that one song, of course, but that's okay. The rest of the album is fucking amazing, and I am definitely going to revisit it a lot as we uh, get as we approach the fall. <laughs> Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. Please go check out this album. It's awesome. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Leave your thoughts about the album in the comments below. Hit the bell to get notified next time I upload. Until next time, thank you for watching and take care.